Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're seeing this video, it means that this is my new project. Um, it's a Grundig uh, party boy. At the moment of filming this video, I am not completely convinced yet if I'm going to take up the project. So that's why I'm just filming this quickly with my mobile phone. Um, but if you're seeing the video, then obviously it means that I've decided to take up the project and then this is the first video in the series. Um, it's a Grundig Party Boy, a small transistor radio from the 70s. It's a portable transistor radio. It can run off battery and off uh, just mains uh, electricity. But it's in really bad shape. Eh? It's um, very, very dirty. There is a lot of um, dust, a lot of rust everywhere. Um, just because it's in such a bad shape, I don't know if it's worth it yet uh, to even try restoring it. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna clean it up and then have a look at it inside and see if it's uh, still worth restoring. Um, so the general condition here is pretty bad. Um, the buttons here, this is the on and off switch, they still seem to be working. Uh, the, this is the volume control. This one is the tuning knob and this one is completely stuck, so I will have to see what's wrong with that. This is the antenna. That one still yeah, works, probably. And here you have also something missing. I think normally there should be here some kind of metal strip, purely decorative, so that's... yeah. Cosmetically the condition is really bad. On the back side here, there is, it's just a bit dirty. And on the bottom you have the uh, place where you can put the battery. Um, but again, not sure yet if I want to do all the effort for such a radio because the radio is pretty worthless in itself. Even if you can find one in a decent condition on the second hand market, it doesn't go for much more than a couple of tens of euros maybe not a lot um but yeah it, it for the rest i think it looks pretty cool so we'll see and this is the the transformer so if you want to run it out of mint also looks pretty bad eh? i don't know what is this and but anyway that's the transformer if you want to run it off the mains power otherwise you need to use the internal battery um so i also need to check that um, first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna start cleaning and then I'm gonna start and see if I can open it up and see uh, what's inside and then we'll decide if we'll take up the project or not <laughs> because I expect also a lot of dirt a lot of rust inside um, but hey I, I think it looks pretty cool even though it is in a really bad sh shape see here all these screws are completely rusted there as well um, but the design is is really 70s eh? so yeah we'll see first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna clean the outside that's a bit more comfortable to to um, work on it and then we'll open it up and see how it looks inside um, i think i'm up for a surprise <laughs> there okay so i did some very quick uh, cleaning it's i didn't go very thoroughly but it's still uh, enough now to work a bit on the radio. So just to show you, this is the battery compartment. So the radio can run, as I said, on battery or on mains power. Um, if this is the battery compartment, see, and here, this is this is not a battery. At first I thought, okay, ooh, the battery is still inside, but this is not the battery. This is just a holder uh, to put the batteries. Um, so there you can see the, the inside. Um, so what I'm not going to do is I'm going to open up it a bit further. I see a screw here and I think there is also one there. And yeah, that's it what I see so far. Um, so let me just figure that out and then uh, I'll come back to you. Yeah, just one more thing. I also just found out the actual model number. So see here, it's a Party Boy 210E. So see, I removed the... Battery cover, well, the two screws at the bottom, and then this just slides open. See now, 
I'm going to try to do this with one hand. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but let's see what we find in here. And if it is still in okay shape. I also noticed that the screws had some markings, so it has been opened before. I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad sign. Usually it's not a good sign, but let's see what it... Oh, lots of dust on the speaker. Just doing this very carefully. Not easy with one hand, but it I have to admit it opens up quite easily. Just have two screws and then the chassis just slides out. It's very well designed. Okay, there we have it. Voila, it's out. And honestly, on the inside, it's looking quite nice. Okay, we have a bit of uh, spider webs, but uh, that's not a big deal. Let's see if I can lift it up. Oh, it's just the bottom of the PCB. Okay, this doesn't look too intimidating at all. So the first thing I want to check here is why this tuning um, knob is so stuck. So I moved both knobs. Um, and I'm gonna try to see, to figure out how I can remove the front plate here. Um, the only thing I see is these two uh, very rusted screws. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna try to get them uh, loose and then see if I can remove the front plate. And then hopefully we can get a look at uh, the dial strings and the mechanism here to see if something is, is stuck here or if something is just rusted or whatever. Um, so I'm gonna try to do that. So I managed to remove this, uh, this, yeah, what is it? Metal sheet or metal plate. Um, so I, what I did is I removed those two uh, rusty screws. That didn't help anything. I also removed all the knobs. They just pop off quite easily. But then I realized that this whole thing here, this whole front panel is basically one piece of, uh, of plastic so you see all the way here um, see this is all the, the same piece so it would be quite difficult to remove so I removed the this this top uh, sheet here it's this is glued um, on the top of the frame here which will this is quite annoying because that will make it again a bit more difficult to put it back but anyway um, so see now this comes loose the front panel here so I'm just gonna try and see if I can pry this open or if I also need to remove the, the bottom uh, metal sheet metal covering here so after a bit of wiggling it just came off in its entirety which is a good thing so I would suggest don't try to take off this uh, topper cover here this metal one because you see this is completely glued to the plastic on the other side uh, so it's just better to move the whole thing and um, make sure that it detaches here from the top um, because that is also glued so okay we can put that one to the side for cleaning and now we can check here what is actually wrong here honestly at first sight I don't see a lot wrong let me just put the knob back on and see it doesn't budge it doesn't it's completely stuck and i don't think that it has anything to do with the dial string because that one seems fine i think it's just rust here inside this mechanism um so i'm gonna try to yeah i'll see what i can do i'm gonna try to spray some contact cleaner or some de-rusting here inside and see what it gives but uh, now it's yeah completely stuck hey look at this it's working perfectly i got it completely loose and i also found out that the knob is real metal <laughs> because I had to turn it a lot and now most of the metal is on my fingers but okay how did I get it loose well 
it was just or what was wrong there was basically nothing wrong the 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 dial cord was perfectly fine it's just there was probably a lot of grime and dirt and and maybe also rust inside the the mechanism here inside the tuning condenser um, so i first got it moving slightly by just using a thing like this put it on and then i started very slowly um, moving the knob and it, it started turning very very slowly so I applied a lot of uh, here my contact 60 um, to deoxidize and to remove the rust and it started going better and better um, but I just had to after a while it started going smooth enough so that I could start using the knob so I put the knob back on um, and then I just kept turning and turning and turning uh, for a long time until it it felt like it was not going to improve anymore so it's really really loose now um, then of course after a while I cleaned it with the WL and then I applied some um, this is some um, yeah it's a bit like grease so it's always a good thing to apply this afterwards it prevents future oxidation and it also acts a bit like uh, like grease so for these types of mechanisms this really is uh, perfect um, so now it's it's working pretty well okay so i've been doing a lot of cleaning mainly on the cabinet it might not look like it but um, i have been cleaning this very thoroughly with uh, metal polish and the spots that you now still see here is metal polish which is uh, stuck inside the small holes of the speaker grill so i will just i still need to clean that out and i think if i once i've cleaned those things out it will look very nice the rest of the cabinet is now turning out quite well actually so the back side is pretty good um, also I removed here as much as glue that was still left here as possible but I don't think it was glue because my my glue remover didn't work at all here on this uh, well residue that was still left here I think somebody tried to glue this back so originally there should be a metal strip here like a just a decorative covering and um, someone tried to glue this back i think with some silicone or any something like that and it's very difficult to get off so i think i might need to my original plan was to just clean off the glue and leave it like that but uh, i think i will have to cover it with some also a small piece of uh, aluminium or or um, chrome i don't know yet um then i st start tried removing the rust here from the handle so this one is still to do but the other one really it, see it looks pretty good actually um, um i just cleaned it off with a, just a piece of uh, aluminum foil or aluminium foil i i never know how to pronounce the <laughs> it in english um, so just a piece of uh, aluminum foil and then some water and some soap and it just cleans off the rust pretty nice um, so on the inside there is still quite a bit of rust and I tried taking off the handle but it uh, it's not easy to take off so not sure if I will be able to do that um, and then I also cleaned the transformer and I also know know what this is, this thing. So it's just an, uh, an, uh, an a universal transformer. So it's not from Grundig itself, it's from another brand. And uh, what it basically does is, you see, you can select here the output voltage. Now it's set to 9 volts, which is what is required for this radio. And according to the specs here, see, you can set it for anywhere between 6 and 12 volts. So I guess this is just a, a transformer. Um, I'm going to open this up. I already cleaned it. I'm going to open it up and then see. Probably there are also some capacitors inside that needs changing. Wow. Okay. So we have a lot of rust and dust inside here. Uh, see. So this is the transformer. And we have a fuse over there. I'll need to check that one as well. And then two uh, capacitors. And I think i'll be able to, i'll going to change these huh? so i took out the the pcb from the from the casing here in the for the transformer so this is a 1000 microfarad capacitor 25 volts and this one is a 47 
um, 47 microfarad, 16 volt. So I'll be swapping those two out and then I see some diodes over there and a resistor and uh, maybe I have no idea what this is, a transistor or a voltage regulator or whatever. Um, and this is how it looks at the bottom. Quite simple, but uh, I, I, yeah, that, that should still work out. I just checked the transformer for, for continuity. That's still fine. Um, so as long as the fuse is still okay, I uh, still need to check that and maybe make sure to deoxidize the, the contacts here a bit of the fuse and then I can test uh, this guy looks to be quite a simple circuit so I don't think there should be a lot wrong with this uh, with this one okay so next a quick check to see if the speaker is still working so I hooked up the signal generator well, I put in a tone of let's say uh, 400 Hertz uh, like 4 volts peak to peak whatever doesn't really matter that much and let's see and uh, so it looks like the speaker is still working fine if I change the frequency yeah at, at, at around 200 Hertz or lower it starts cracking quite Badly, but I think this is just due to the vibrations because if I wiggle with my contacts here a bit then the the it goes away so yeah we'll have to see when the when the radio is really working um if the speaker is still um yeah working like it completely like it should even also for the lower frequencies but i think I think it should be fine. So I would like to clean the antenna here and as you see it's just uh, yeah you can just it's a telescopic antenna it's quite a big one actually so you can just pull it out and it's quite dirty and and very stiff <laughs> um, so I just cleaned it like this but it turned out very very nicely so have a look at this see it's very shiny looks like new basically and it's very long but okay yeah it it turned out very nice i'm really happy with uh, with the result also i i um sprayed a lot of um contact cleaner here in the in this bracket because yeah the antenna contact is 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 basically physically here inside and eh? so it has to create good conduct uh connectivity and also it makes sure that the antenna uh, goes in and out a bit more smoothly um, so that's uh, pretty nice and i'm very happy with uh, the result see i can just close it now with one hand which was definitely not the case before um, then i also did i cleaned the switches here and i also cleaned the the volume control so yeah what else did i do um i cleaned here the the headphone jack i think this is and the um input for the adapter um, i also sprayed some uh, contact cleaner in there uh, used my usual uh, three-step approach here um and uh, yeah this is really i mean the reason why this is so important is because here in both uh, uh, connectors or in both sockets there is a switch inside so if you um, plug in the DC uh, adapter then there is a switch which disconnects the battery power I think yeah and if you plug in here the um, headphone uh, yeah a headphone in the headphone socket then it disconnects the speaker so this means that even if you're not going to use these th the switch inside needs to be clean eh? because the it, it well if the switch inside here is not really clean then you'll get the distortion on your sound because uh, the sound is co coming via this switch so don't forget when you are um, um, repairing or restoring a radio like this don't forget to have a look at all the uh, external connectors check if there is not uh, some kind of switch inside and make sure that you clean the connectors even if you're not planning to use them so even the headphone socket if you say okay i'm never going to use the headphone socket clean it anyway because um the the yeah the audio is coming through the 
the the socket before it goes to the speaker. Um, then I also cl cleaned the front panel here. Uh, let me show you. Now this was quite difficult. There were a, it's very scratched, so it, it, there was a lot of. First of all, there was a lot of dirt on it, which I cleaned, and then it was also quite scratched. And and yeah, see, there are still some scratches left there. So I'm not gonna get it better than this, but it's it's uh, already a huge improvement um, compared to what it was. Um, I used yeah, just first of all regular cleaner. Um, isopropyl alcohol or, or and some other cleaning products and then I used uh, some uh, scratch remover automotive scratch remover uh, to get as much scratches removed as possible but some of them are quite deep and these things here are also just damages to the plastic um, so it's not gonna get better than this, but it's it's a lot better than it was basically, and it's it's really acceptable right now. So I think um, the only way this can still improve is by just replacing it with a different panel. But um, yeah, this is really nice compared to what it was. So. Um, and then you the buttons. Eh? So I also cleaned uh, the uh, the buttons, which is a big improvement. Yeah, you, now you can really see that this is red. There's a red dot here inside <laughs> because it was uh, almost not visible. So this is the included transformer. Um, it's not an original Grundig transformer. It's from a different uh, third-party brand. Um, so you have your mains 220 volts originally uh, coming in here. Then you have uh, the fuse. I cleaned the fuse here with uh, some contact cleaner and I cleaned the entire transformer basically because it was extremely dirty. Um, then you have your 220 volts, it's um, dropped down and it's also regulated and um, uh, rectified. So, and then here with this uh, potentiometer. You can select the the voltage that you want so you can go from 6 volts dc to 12 uh, volts dc for this radio we need nine so this normally should be nine uh, now it's not in the casing at the moment so you can't really see it very well but if it's in the if it would be in the case then yeah you see uh, should be set to nine so what i also did is i replaced these two capacitors here um, when they when I check them out, they they seem still pretty okay. They are a bit more than ten percent off, um, but yeah, in the transformer it's always a good idea to have new caps. Um, especially you don't really know what they're gonna do under load. Huh? Um, I think like the the one thousand microfarad measured something like one thousand one hundred and fifty. Um, I think. So it's a slightly out of spec, but but not like not uh, that it's uh, dramatic. But I changed them anyway. Um, that's about it. Oh yeah, here yeah you have the output. Um, so the output is going to this uh, DIN plug, um, and then you have here a cable which is basically a sort of adapter. Eh? So it goes from the DIN plug, which you just plug in here, standard DIN plug. To this uh, proprietary uh, connector from Grundig, which uh, you can then here uh, plug into the the radio. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to check if the um, the transformer is still working fine, um, and for that I'm going to here check if it is still. Um, yeah, giving some giving <laughs> nine volts would be nice to have uh, for this radio. So that's what I'm gonna do, and then um, what I'm gonna also gonna do is to really put it exactly on uh, nine volts because, like I said, the transformer is originally for two twenty, but um, the today we have more. Huh? So we have. 235 even sometimes even more than 235 on the um, on the mains here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna after I check that it's working fine I'm gonna make sure that it 
outputs exactly nine volts and not not more so we're just going to connect this here so these are the connections for the the output let's see if i can connect my multimeter here should be possible okay that looks already pretty good actually i have 165 volts going in and i already have nine a uh, bit more than nine volts dc coming out so it, it only needs like 165 volts which is already enough to but okay there is no load huh? um, i don't have uh, the load connected at all um okay so let's I, i'm going to switch to a bulb of 40 watts and now i have 245 volts going in and 9.3 more or less coming out so i mean this looks like it's working fine let's check if the potentiometer is also working fine because i cleaned the potentiometer quite a lot with um, contact cleaner okay so let's see yep, this is clearly up and this is down that's actually pretty nice <laughs> so i'm gonna put it at a bit below nine volts um so we're gonna we're gonna what i'm gonna do now is i'm just gonna connect it to the radio huh? and see if the radio is working fine um, normally i would connect like the radio to power supply on the battery voltage but i mean why not just uh, connect this one up eh? so i'm just going to plug it in if i can yeah you know. remember that i cleaned here everything already eh? um for the rest i haven't done anything on the radio so let's just check how what it is uh, how it is performing as is basically of obviously with all the knobs and the dials and everything cleaned eh? so i have it uh, on here and i have it on fm let's just put up the volume a bit and let's just see what it's doing eh? okay okay we have seems like um, the amplifier is working and I have uh, more or less 8.8 .8 volts on the input here, um, which seems nice. Um, I also, I just uh, extended the antenna because I realized I didn't have the antenna uh, extended. Anyway, let's first adjust this so that we have like exactly 9 volts. Um, okay like this now now let's see if i turn off the radio there is no difference in or nearly no difference in voltage at all it's this is perfect uh, in terms of input voltage for the radio um now let's just see if we receive something on fm right so far nothing Oh, trying. Oh, signées François Zardy, les interprètes, mais les paroles sont signées Jean Max Rivière qui a écrit. Okay, it's working very, very nice actually. I do have a bit of static, but that could be the reception. Yeah. Okay, I cannot stop on music, but uh, it's actually working quite well. And I haven't even done anything on the radio itself, eh? so I haven't replaced any capacitors, I haven't done any alignment whatsoever. Ik ben een artsrecht gekomen die zei van 
je vraag is terecht. En, uh, Look at this. I mean, it's, it's working zijn, perfectly fine. Waardoor je leven terug wat meer kwaliteit uh, krijgt. En... Let's go back to the talk radio. Was het ook zo na die operatie, na de amputatie? En de de tone control ja, ja, is also ja, working. Is so this working. this radio has just like a but a one button which you can uh, which basically reduces the the um, uh, higher tones in the in the sound. So gaat gaan en en ja. There is not really a control. It's just like an on on or off switch. Let's try AM and uh, I, this also this radio only has long wave and medium wave, so there is no short wave. So let's just see if we if it at least tries to pick up something there. I mean, this it's now here uh, in the morning, so I don't expect to receive a lot or basically anything on uh, AM. So, but just let's just check if it even tries to do something on AM. But it looks like it's trying. Maybe let me turn off this light here. Because that sometimes it's a LED that sometimes causes a bit of uh, interference. At least it's trying something. But I don't even know if it's worth checking because... Uh, oh! Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, I cannot even judge right now because this is exception. Is it's normal that it's this bad at this time of day, but it's receiving and it's decoding. So that's already nice. Long wave. Don't expect anything here. Oh! It wouldn't be like with Gary. For a start, Jazza would be in with me. I know. It ain't that. What then? Yeah, it's working. <laughs> wow. At this time of day, it's, it's even receiving, so... Yeah. Okay. Um... Yeah, what to do next? Uh, first thing I'll definitely do is put this transformer here back in the case. Um, that's the first thing I'll do. Um, but then, the question is, do we go further with the restoration? Because the radio is basically working. <laughs> I'll have to think about that. I, 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 I want to change the capacitors inside because there are a couple of caps in there, um, which are on the power supply and which, uh, I mean, it's always a good thing to change them. But then, are we going to do an alignment? I'm, am I going to go through the alignment procedure to align a radio, which is basically working fine? I, I haven't decided yet, so um, we'll have to see. Et voilà, we are done here. We have a nicely working uh, transformer now, set to 9 volts, as you see. <laughs> and it's even adjusted perfectly for 9 volts, so don't touch this anymore. Um, yeah, that's already one stage of the radio done.
see. So those capacitors over there, those are the very least I would like to change. Um, there is another one, another electrolytic. There is another one. So I also might need to change that. Um, need, I don't think they need to be changed, but since I'm in here anyway, why not do it? Huh? And I think if you change them, then maybe it's also good to align the radio. I don't know. Let's see. Um, but I'm already glad that everything is basically working. So now I can just swap a capacitor, see if I didn't break anything, still, still working, swap another one. So um, just for... Uh, out of curiosity so there you see that's those are the output transistors so there is one and the other one is over there those are germanium uh, output transistors glad that those are still fine okay so i found something on the speaker here see this tabs here where the connections are is loose see so i don't know if it should be like soldered or glued, I don't know, but I think I'm gonna just glue it back with uh, some um, super glue. Okay, so I've been checking a bit where are all the el electrolytics here in the radio, so and I marked them here on the schematic. It's only five, um, so you have these three over here then you have a small one over there and an even smaller one over there um, so that's basically it um, i also marked them there on the uh, diagram of the the pcb so i'm going to swap out those and there is another one which i'm not going to swap and that's here the one in the detector because that one is inside the the FM detection can, which I guess is, let me see, um, I think it's in here, but I'm not really sure, let me see, um, yeah, I think so, yeah, so see here you have the, so this capacitor here, it's this one that's C4 and C4 is marked here uh, there over there that's C4 and then they say here that this is board F3 and F3 is this can over here and that's that one uh, now pay attention because this uh, is the PCB view from the bottom side so this means that you have to mirror the view if you're looking at uh, from this side but yeah again I'm not going to change that one uh, because I don't want to fiddle to get these uh, cans opened up and I don't want to uh, uh, run the risk of breaking anything and anyway it's a very small one eh? so it's a 2 microfarad capacitor and it's only 12 volts but it's in the detection circuit so it's uh, doesn't have a lot of stress at all so I think the chance that there is something wrong with this cap is uh, quite low especially since the FM is working so well okay so I think that's enough for this video right um, I will be swapping out the caps and then I will uh, see you in the next video. So if you like this one, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and then I'll see you next time. So bye bye.